Good evening, everyone. Buenas noches a todos. Uh, welcome to DIA Chelsea. My name is Suna Massa, uh, curatorial assistant at DIA Foundation, and part of the curatorial team for Del Cimorelo, El Abrazo, the artist's first solo presentation in the United States, which officially opened to the public today. My colleague Alexis Larry, curator at DIA and curator of the exhibition, and I are thrilled to mark this moment with a space for conversation with the artist herself. Tonight's event is the first program in Soil Sessions, a series of interdisciplinary activations with Earth at the as the subject and material of Morelos' work. For over 30 years, Delcy Morelos has worked across painting, sculpture, and installation. Born in Tierra Alta, Colombia, she went on to graduate from La Escuela de Bellas Artes in Cartagena in 1991. She first established herself as an abstract painter with large-scale meditations on violence, race, and land, themes still at play in her practice today. Over the last decade, the artist has focused on site-specific installations using soil, clay, natural fibers, and other natural materials. Morelos has channeled her personal history and research into cosmologies of ancestral Indian Amazon and Amazonian cultures into a practice that centers and honors the earth, her color, her scent, her presence, her agency. Recent solo presentations include Moradas at Galeria Santa Fe in Bogota in 2019, Mother's Surface at the Southern Alberta Art Gallery, Lethbridge, Canada, also 2019, and Del Cimorelos, The Place of a Soul at El Museo de Arte Moderno de Buenos Aires in 2022. Del Cimorelos del Abrazo is accompanied by the first bilingual publication expressly dedicated to the artist's soil-based works, publishing date to be announced. <laughs> Following Dia Chelsea, the artist will have a solo presentation, Del Cimorelos, El Oscuro de Abajo, at Marion Goodman Gallery in Paris, opening on October 14th. The Pulitzer Arts Foundation in St. Louis will present her second U.S. solo presentation, opening in March 2024. Before we jump in, two notes and a few thank yous. This conversation will be held in English and Spanish with live interpretation by curator, writer, and somatic explorer Camila Marambio and contributor to Dia's forthcoming book on Morelos. We would like to note that the galleries will be open until 8 p.m., so if anyone wants to spend more time with the work, they're welcome to. We extend our deepest thanks to the Dia team and our collaborators who made Delta Morelos El Abrazo possible. I see many in the crowd tonight. This exhibition and public program were made possible as part of a long-term partnership between the Institute of S for Studies on Latin American Art and the DR Art Foundation, spanning exhibitions, publications, public programs, and educational initiatives to, through 2026. Thank you for the people that made tonight's program possible. Kimberly Golding, Max Noon, Darren Grant, and our wonderful visitor services team. And thank you to Camila for generously lending your interpretation skills to this program. And lastly, I must thank Delcy for the privilege of supporting her vision, and thank you to Alexis for being a thought partner. Thanks, Zuna, gracias. <laughs> okay, so um, today is gonna be a slightly, un maybe an unusual format for a conversation. We hope that it will really be a conversation among all of us um, from the beginning. And um, so I will start by saying, and Delcy, I know you have something that you wanna ask our audience, um, but I first want to ask if you will say one or two words about being an artist and, and how you got there. Te traduzco. <laughs> Alexis le cuenta al público que esta va a ser una conversación un poco, eh, va a ser espontánea. <laughs> Vamos a dar vuelta eh, el, el formato de presentación. Pero antes de llegar a eso, te invita a que nos cuentes un poco de cómo llegaste a ser artista. Bueno, yo llegué a ser artista por sobrevivir. Si no hubiera sido artista, yo me hubiera muerto, me hubiera aburrido de la vida. I became an artist. I got so immersed in what she was saying that I forgot that I was going to translate. Telsey <laughs> um, says that she would have died if she wouldn't have become an artist. She would have also died of boredom. <laughs> La creación 
es mi vida, me gusta transformar las materias, me gusta transmitir emociones, me, busca, me gusta crear emociones en la gente, me gusta crear experiencias. Creativity and creation is my life. I like to transform material, emotions, and experiences. Igual que los idiomas no son mi talento, eh, la expresión así en el escenario tampoco. Así que para mí ha sido un gran esfuerzo estar aquí. Espero que perdonen todas mis errores. <laughs> Just like language is not my forte, neither is public speaking or performant, performativity like this. So please excuse um, my blunders. Sí, este, el arte es mi segunda lengua. Art is my second language. Y la mayoría de ustedes hablan esa lengua. And most of you here speak that language. Es la lengua de los sentimientos, del corazón y del alma. It's the language of feeling, of the heart and of the soul. Por eso soy artista y por eso estoy aquí. That is why I'm an artist and that is why I'm here tonight. <laughs> okay. So, Delcy. I know that you wanted to ask that maybe we start um, from the audience and um, to ask if, since she made this work for you all um, and for all of us here, um, I think Delcy wanted to ask if any of you have seen the installation yet, what it made you think about. Alexis, le empieza a introducir al público este pedido que tú tienes de escuchar de ustedes ¿Qué es lo que esta obra les hizo sentir? Eh, yo les quiero explicar un poco por qué necesito que las personas hablen sobre lo que sintieron visitando a el abrazo y el cielo terrestre. Porque yo trabajo para que ustedes tengan una experiencia y para que sus emociones eh, afloren, florezcan. I need to say a few words about why I would like to hear from you as the public. I make work, and particularly this work, El Cielo Terrestre and El Abrazo, so that emotions flourish. Eh, voy a escoger dos personas que ya he hablado con ellas para que hablan de sus sensaciones sobre eh, su visita y su experiencia en esta exposición aquí en Día Chelsea. Um, es, por coincidencia son dos colombianos pero de pronto es porque he hablado mucho con ellos y los escuché y me pareció maravillosa lo que me estaban describiendo sobre su experiencia en mi obra I'm going to start by calling out two people whom I've had the chance to talk to by chance they are both Colombian but that is just chance and I've had a Uh, opportunity to talk to them about what they experienced in this work being exhibited here. Porque yo hice la obra y no he tenido la experiencia que ustedes tienen. Yo trabajé para ustedes. I made the work for you. I do not have the experience that you have of the work. Después puede uno de ustedes hablar. After I call on these two people, the space is open for others to talk. Alguien que sienta que debe decir lo que sintió. Whomever feels like they must say what they experienced. Y yo invito a que se siente aquí a Amparo a que hable. We didn't tell her she was doing this in advance. <laughs> it's, it's truly an honor. Es un honor. No sé si quieres traducir o no. Yo sé, yo te entiendo. Oh, you understand me even when I speak English. <laughs> That because that's the Colombian spirit. We understand each other on a deeper level. And it's really an honor to be here because um, I think this is one of the pieces that has really moved my soul. Like an art piece that moves your soul, I think is very unique. I've been to environments or buildings sometimes or a place in nature, a forest that you walk through and your soul 
gets moved and your senses are awakened uh, not just your senses of your eyes but your hearing the smells of a fern um, the, the, the sounds the of course colors and all that and to be able to capture that in an art piece for me was really moving um, and transformative uh, also um, to be moved by a piece because it, we physically get moved through the piece right? you, you enter the first room and your eyes adjust to the darkness and you have to kind of go within to really understand it and it um, it's reminded me of remnants of, of nature. It's funny that you you said like, what do we think about the piece? And it's it's hard to use words because it's so um, it's it's really an emotive and experiential. It's really less about the rational thinking these these pieces for me. Um, and so it's like remnants of of the past, remnants of of a human past, but also the past of nature. And then um, the other piece, how it leads you to this core. And what I was telling Delcy is that it, it felt like the, the essence of nature was in that core and was holding you. And the essence of nature is a feminine essence. And there's a real femininity to that piece. Uh, a, there's a delicate quality, yet so much power, which nature has that. And um, it was very moving. I've been there several times, and the first time it was almost, uh, I felt its power. And then the second time it, it, it brought out emotion that was very raw and <coughs> sublime. So I just thank you because it's truly an offering that you've offered to all of us. It's less of a work that's displayed and more of an experiential offering that connects us to something deeper, something truly sublime. And that's, I don't know if there's anything else that I, <laughs> I, I want to That was to beautiful. Oh, I mean, I'm just very moved, very moved and really um, also impressed by, by Dia to, to exhibit such a powerful, unique piece here. Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Delcy. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, gracias, uh, Delcy, por uh, invitarme a hablar sobre ese momento que fue tan importante para mí hace una hora. We were having a beautiful conversation with Delcy and Natalie, and uh, a friend from Colombia, his name is Carlos, showed up. He's from the same region where Delcy is coming from. And he w was sharing with us his emotion of being touched by the peace and um, establishing connections with the um, landscape where he grew up. And little by little, we started to talk about um, the gentleness, the, the abundance, the violence, that are, all of that are part of the country that we come from, which is a country that also has um, given to the world a very powerful female artist. I think I always, especially now that I live in New York, I, I think of the art of Colombia and there is, is an art that the best of it always comes from powerful women and big mothers. <laughs> <laughs> like my own mom and my grandmother. I, I, I come from a, from a matrilineality that at some point I thought it was present in the galleries. And uh, when I talked to Delcy, 
sincerely about those emotions. I felt like her voice through the piece and and through her body was touching my heart. And uh, and I'm very grateful that you are here. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Bueno, me tocó contar algo que pasó y que él vio cuando el que cuida el room. Bien. David vio y cuando entró David, eh, Bill, eh, dijo, esto parece Richard Serra, pero hecho con tierra. Y que huele mejor que el room. <laughs> So Delcy had a moment that, that she shared with David where somebody came into uh, the gallery space, I guess one of the attendants, Bill, maybe? Yeah. Bill Dilworth, who has um, been the caretaker of the Earth Room for over 30 years. Oh, yes. <laughs> there we go, that's who it was. A legend in New York City. Mm -hmm. yes. And um, he made the observation that uh, this looked like a Richard Serra. Um, and, but, but, que era como a Richard Serra, pero hecho con tierra, but made with earth. Um, and that it uh, was reminiscent of the earth room, but smelled so much better. <laughs> Delcy, I want to ask you a question that um, came up from that while others think a little bit. Te va a hacer una pregunta por mientras que otros eh, tomen valentía para hablar. You often think about how to create installation strategies that move the body or so that your work impresses in a way that um, choreographs the body. And I think here you've done that um, a little differently than in the past. Do you want to translate? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Do you want to hear me translating? <laughs> Do I just whisper into <laughs> Delcy's ear? <laughs> Comúnmente, eh, o muchas veces, Has trabajado eh, obras eh, que tienen una relación con el cuerpo físico y, la impres y crear una impresión en el cuerpo del transeúnte. Uh -huh. eh, la, yo empecé a trabajar con tierra en el 2012 en la ciudad de Fez, en Marruecos, una zona desértica muy diferente a la zona fértil que es el Valle del Sinú en Colombia. I started to work with earth, the soil, um, in 2012 in the city of Fez, in um, a very arid um, place that's starkly different from where Delcy is from in Colombia. En Tierra Alta, la tierra está cubierta de una capa vegetal. En Fez, la ciudad, eh, la, la tierra está desnuda. En Tierra Alta, en Colombia, and Tierra Alta means high land, the earth is covered with a vegetable layer, a matted vegetable layer. In Fez, it's parched. Sí, podía ver la tierra, podía ver a uh, la diosa desnuda. In Fez, therefore, she sees, she sees the earth unclothed by the vegetable layer. Y por eso yo empecé a trabajar con tierra en Fez, en Marruecos. And that is why she began to work with the goddess <laughs> in Fez, Marruecos. Eh, y para mí ha sido desde ese momento eh, una misión mostrar la tierra de otra manera, como nunca antes ha sido mostrada. And from there, or since then, she has had this mission to work with earth, with soil, and show it in a way that it has not yet been perceived, seen. Porque todo el tiempo la estamos viendo, pero no la estamos viendo realmente. Because we often look at it, but we're not seeing it. Porque siempre tenemos muchos pensamientos en la cabeza y no tenemos tiempo de escucharla. Because we have so many thoughts in our head that we don't actually look and hear her, look at her and hear her. 
y mi trabajo eh, como artista es mostrar la tierra como una materia sagrada, como la madre tierra que es. My work as an artist is to show the earth as the sacred matter. También mi misión es que ustedes, los espectadores, logran logren escucharla y sentirla cuando ella está en el lugar expositivo. And my mission is also to do that in the exhibition space that you as audience can hear and see her like this even indoors. Por eso hago mis instalaciones muy grandes para que ustedes eh, logren percibir la grandiosidad de la tierra. This is why I make grand installations, so that you perceive that with your bodies, that grandeur of the earth. Para que la logren escuchar y sentir sin miedo. So that you feel her and hear her without fear. Porque somos de lo que nos alimentamos y todos nuestros alimentos surgieron de la tierra. Because we are all what we eat, and all of our alimentos, our nourishment, comes from the earth. Y somos tierra. We are earth. Y cada vez que ustedes vean la tierra, es como si se estuvieran viendo al espejo. So every time that you see earth, it is as if you're looking in the mirror. Por eso cuando ustedes la tocan, se están tocando a sí mismos. And when you touch her, you are touching yourself. Cuando ustedes huelen, eh, el cerebro los lleva a, al pasado, cuando ustedes estuvieron en el bosque y olieron un, un olor similar. And when you smell her here, your brain is transported through memory to forests that you've been in. Es como si el olor fuera una máquina del tiempo. It's as if scent is a time traveling machine. Y por eso ustedes pueden sentir muchas emociones allí adentro. And this is why you may feel many emotions inside el abrazo. Dulcie, maybe we can give space for anyone who feels they want to share something now. I know that's a hard act to follow. It's a constant <laughs> thought I have, but if anyone feels brave, they're or welcome to. Or has a question. Or has a question. Doesn't need to be a comment. And we can also conti continue to, while you think about that, sit with that. Delcy, will you say something along those lines about the installation um, El Cielo Terrenal with um, how you have treated the space and the, the color and the, the way the light and the color work together. Um, hay algo muy importante que debo decirles, que están muy equivocados, que todo no tienen por qué agarrarlos que todo no tienen por qué poderlo tocar y mirar a toda su plenitud. I have to, <laughs> I have to tell you all <laughs> um, that uh, you're mistaken. <laughs> not everything that you see you have to touch. Not everything that you encounter are you able to grasp completely. Sí. Los sueños, cuando ustedes están soñando, no pueden tocar sus sueños. When you are dreaming, you do not touch your dreams. Tampoco pueden verlo en toda su plenitud. You also do not see them in all of their plenitude and their fullness. Solo lo pueden percibir levemente. You just perceive it subtly. Pero le están pro produciendo emociones. Emotions are being produced. Por eso yo estoy tratando de replicar el lenguaje de los sueños. This is why I try to replicate the language of dreams. Por eso en el suelo terrenal 
se siente algo inaprensible. This is why in el cielo terrenal, el suelo terrenal, <laughs> el, ci <laughs> el cielo, <laughs> in the earthly heavens, el cielo terrenal, there's something unperce unperceivable, imperceptible. Por eso ustedes tienen que hacer el trabajo de entrar con mucho tiempo y esperar que sus ojos se acostumbren a la, a la oscuridad y que los objetos emergen de esa oscuridad. This is why when you enter el cielo terrenal, you have to enter and allow time to slowly adjust the way in which you perceive light, space, and be, be met by the objects as they emerge from that darkness. Eh, ustedes tienen que hacer un trabajo. No todo se los va a ser dicho. You have to work. Not all of it is being said to you. Si sí, cada uno de ustedes tiene la tarea de sentir y dejar que la pieza le hable y le hable de qué le estoy hablando. No lo que yo le estoy hablando a ustedes, sino lo que ustedes están percibiendo de la pieza. So if each of you does that work of allowing yourself to hear what it has to say to you, it is not what Delcy is saying to you, but what you are feeling that it says. Yo solo les doy pistas, ustedes hacen el resto del trabajo. I just give you traces, you do the rest, you fill it in. De la oscuridad emerge la vida. Ustedes fueron gestados en un útero. Ese útero era oscuro, cálido, materno, femenino. From the darkness is born, or is birth, life. We are all coming from uteruses, that dark, deep womb. El momento de la muerte es similar. The moment of the death is similar. Es oscuro, es húmedo. Y es solitario. It is dark. It is humid. It is solitary. Debemos aprender a ser amigos de esa oscuridad. We must befriend that darkness. De esa oscuridad surgimos y a esa oscuridad volveremos. From that darkness we emerge and we return to it. Hablamos de la otra pieza. Should we talk about the other piece? <laughs> Esto se puso muy dramático. <laughs> This became very dramatic. <laughs> Hablemos del tejido y de la estru estructura y de todo lo que ocurre dentro de esa escultura y que ustedes están llenos de preguntas alrededor de eso. <laughs> Let's talk about the structure and the weaving and how it was compiled, composed, created, and that you are full of questions about how did this actually get made. Cómo está flotando, cómo se pudo lograr, cómo se hizo, qué hay allá adentro. <laughs> Why is it floating? How is it done? What's inside of it? Ahí hay magia. <laughs> There's magic. Sí. La magia del tejido. The magic of the woven, the weaving. Todos estamos tejidos con el universo, con el cosmos, con el agua, con la tierra. We are all woven into the cosmos, the earth, the water. Así es como se hizo esa escultura, haciendo ese tejido con el cosmos, con el agua, con la madera, con el sol. This is how that piece was made, continuing that weaving of bringing in the earth, the wood, the sun, the water. La tierra está flotando y está colgada del techo, está colgada del cielo. The earth is floating and it is suspended. It is hanging from the ceiling or not the ceiling, the sky, <laughs> the heavens. The earth floats in the heavens. No hay gravedad. En ese momento que no hay gravedad, la tierra es sagrada. There is no gravity, and at the moment that there is no gravity, earth is sacred. 
mi misión era mostrarle a ustedes la tierra como una materia sagrada de la que ustedes están hechos. My mission was to show you the earth as sacred material of which you all are made. No solo ustedes, yo también. <laughs> Not just you, me too. Para mí es importante eh, crear emociones en los espectadores. Eh, al principio de cuando tenía mis 20 años, yo estaba muy frustrada porque pensaba que los escritores podían hacerlo mejor que un artista plástico. My mission is to move and to create emotions. And when I was young, in my early 20s, I was very frustrated because I felt like writers did this better than visual artists did. Created emotions. Pero me ha tocado hacer cosas más grandes para lograrlo y me da mucho trabajo hacerlo. <laughs> to achieve this mission, I've had to move into making very, very big things. And that is a lot of work. Porque tengo mucha competencia como artista. Ustedes tienen celulares todo el tiempo mirando TikTok y Instagram. I have a lot of competition as an artist. Everybody is always looking at images and TikTok. Instagram. And Instagram. <laughs> Very important. <laughs> That's who I'm competing against. Así que ustedes son los culpables de que a mí me toque hacer cosas tan grandes y que cuesten tanto dinero y tanto trabajo hacerlas. So you are all guilty of having me have to work, having that I have to work in this way um, to invest a lot of time in making big things that cost a lot of money to remind us all that the earth is sacred. <laughs> Pero yo lo único que les pido es que entren a ese espacio en silencio y que se permitan tocar por la Madre Tierra. The, the one thing I ask is that you enter that space and that you allow yourselves to be touched by Mother Earth. Porque eso somos. Because that is who we are. Sí. Y si no cuidamos y protegemos a la Madre Tierra, no nos estamos cuidando y protege, protegiendo a nosotros mismos. And if we don't care and take care of the earth, then we are not taking care of ourselves. ¿Qué quieren? ¿Ustedes hablan o hay más preguntas? <laughs> Who's going to talk? <laughs> Or more questions. Hey, hey. ay, ay, vamos. Um, well, thank you very much uh, for the space and for such a beautiful pieces of art. I honestly feel that the smell is really powerful and it really transports you immediately. Um, in my experience, the first time I have that, that thing was um, a long time ago. I was walking in San Agustin. I spent some time there. It's also in the highlands in Colombia, but in the south. And I felt the earth smell. And then as soon as I came, in, I went into the gallery, I was transported to that moment, which is can become a deja vu every time I go to the forest, you know, the smell of the living being. And I have to confess that <laughs> when I was walking, He, to come here and I started looking to the galleries through the windows and I was like, oh my God, these spaces are so dead and cold. I mean, with all respect, you know. <laughs> and then, <laughs> when I, because, you know, I mean, I also kind of do art, whatever I try. And, and yeah, sometimes it's just, it's a, you didn't feel much. And I, I feel that art is a sublime expression of the soul. And so when I walk into her pieces, I was like, wow, this is alive. And it was an absolute contrast of what I, you know, felt walking through the, through the street, uh, looking to these spaces of these other galleries. And, and so I kind of appreciate that a lot. Also to have this given space, you know, this city is, com is complex, it's tough. And then to be able to just get into a gallery space and be 
absolutely transport to something that is a living, is alive. I mean, of course, the city, I mean, this is a land that is sacred and there is a lot of places also in the city where you can remember this living being that is that we inhabit. But it's not very common to have that deep experience with a piece of art, let's say. And so I'm very grateful for that because, I mean, I don't even need to touch it. But just being there, you know, like just being there, feeling the peace. And I'm very, very grateful for that. Thank you so much. Thank you for expressing your sentiments. Bueno, quiero que hay muchas preguntas de pronto alrededor de la pieza, pero vamos a escuchar otra persona. Well, thank you so much for this space, and uh, especially thank you, Delcy, for allowing me, allowing us to feel like uh, what we felt when we walk into the room. Uh, we were talking this morning, and we were talking about like a question, and it was like, why is it so big? You know, like, and this is not the question that you ask to a mountain, you know, like the mountain is, nature is big because it is, you know, like, and I love how art can leave you with more questions than answers you know like when i walk into the space and i look down because like you have that contrast of this like huge space that makes you discover these pieces within darkness and then you have to look up when you go to the next room and you just like feel how the artwork is not imposed to you the same way as nature doesn't impose itself to you it just happens and like it overwhelms you in like a very good way just to understand uh, or or imagine that like this massive uh, piece of earth just grew up in or grew or form itself in new york city you know like in a you know in a city where things happen so fast where like speed is just like going on non-stop and this piece makes you just feel how humble you have to be to nature and like how you have to just like be solemn and like quiet and like touch it gently you know like because it it, it invites you it's very tactile and, and you just want to to grasp like very subtly so like it was a piece that i was like extremely moved by and thank you so much for allowing me to feel this delty Oh, I live across the street, and so I'm frequently immersed in kind of this beautiful art world. And um, I happen to be on a crazy conference call, walking my tiny dog in my furry bathrobe one morning when they were loading this in or kind of finally staging it. And I'm like, you know, angrily on the phone, like we all are frequently with whatever work we're engaged in. And I think the movable windows were open and I could see it and I just started to kind of laugh to myself and I got off the phone and I just kind of stared at the embrace and at the work and just staring at it and the scale of it felt kind of like a weighted blanket you know and she's talking about dreams and I I found it tremendously calming and grounding and also delightful so um, not being engaged in kind of an intentional um, way I thought was even more special and so I'm excited to see it in you know not on my bathrobe with my tiny dog and I loved it we thought you guys must think we were crazy as we were building it with the doors yeah, I'm like what a little bit I always wondered <laughs> yeah Thank you so much for these beautiful artworks. I have a three-part question, more technical. Um, especially in the second room, where did the material come from? And the second question, like the dirt and the hay and whatever. Um, second question would be, how do you anticipate how this piece may evolve in the duration of the show, the scent? Do you expect that to change? Is it gonna get stronger, not as strong, diluted? And third, where does where does the material go after it's completed? Bueno, gracias por tus preguntas. Thank you for your questions. La primera creo que la va a responder Alexis. <laughs> the first one. Las, sí, eh, la tercera también, creo que la segunda yo. <laughs> 
Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll go for it. Um, actually, Zuna, do you want to go for? Sure. Yeah. I can go for so for Abrazo, we so Hadia, we have a gardener that we worked with for a long time who helped us out with this project, as you can imagine, with soil. And so we decided to use recycled garden soil from a Manhattan garden that was going to be decommissioned, and we used it for that work. Um, we used the clay from Dia Beacon from our own backyard. The hay is from the Hudson Valley. The coconut is not, but there's not a lot of coconut in New York, naturally. <laughs> um, wait, which is the third question? Which one am I missing? So materials, oh, and then cinnamon and clove. Cinnamon and clove, um, which we sourced. Um, and copaiba, which Delcy sourced and brought to us. Um, and materials in both installations? Or were you speaking specifically about Yeah. Yeah. I was mainly just wondering about the dirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's the earth, um, the dirt that we used, um, we tried to approximate peat moss as well, as it's a material that Delcy's been interested in in a long time. Um, on the one hand, for its texture and its abilities to hold moisture, but we didn't want to extract it because that would harm the environment. It's not something we wanted to do. So using these materials allowed us to approximate that um, and be able to make this mountain. So is this a con a con okay. was this a concoction that was like a witch's brew? <laughs> That, like with ingredients that she already knew what the smell, the, how powerful and impactful the smell would be, the scent would be. Eh, yo soy una tejedora. Después de que aprendí de mi eh, maestro Huitoto, filósofo de la Amazonía, aprendí que todos somos un tejido. Estamos tejidos con el universo y aprendí a tejer la materia y los elementos. Y como dijo un arquitecto colombiano, hablando de eh, la sismoresistencia de su arquitectura, y él dijo a un tejido le puede ocurrir un terremoto y no pasa nada. I'm a weaver. <coughs> I'm a weaver. She's a weaver. Um, <laughs> and uh, as um, a huitoto uh, sabedor, elder, uh, maestro, teacher, uh, said to Delcy, uh, the weaving happens at a universal level and it comes down to the materials. And this experience of weaving the different materials, water, soil, um, sun, creates this binding. And um, as a Colombian architect once said, when something is woven, nothing can cut through it. Um, it holds it. It's resilient and resistant. Y aquí en esta escultura, el abrazo, todo está tejido. Está tejido la materia, está tejido los vegetales, está tejido la materia, eh, la eh, madera, está tejido el hierro, todo es un tejido ahí. So everything is woven in. There is wood, there is uh, steel, there is earth, there is um, uh, clay. All of that is woven, not layered or compounded. También estamos tejidos con la gravedad y con el techo de la sala. It is also woven into gravity and to the ceiling of the building. También estamos tejidos con la naturaleza. It's also woven into nature, as we all are. Es impredecible. It's unpredictable. <laughs> Pero aquí eh, estamos amigos de ella y eh, todo va a ocurrir como lo planeado. But we are friends with nature, and it would all, will all occur as planned. I'm going to butt in. Um, and um, these women were very humble about the sourcing of some of the materials. I got to be privy to um, the years 
um, uh, worth of researching sustainable materials and looking to create a, a woven um, context for the sourcing of some of these materials so that they could be using um, uh, different elements that would replace using peat, uh, this earth that is something that Delcy honors and venerates, um, but shouldn't be pulled out of the ground. So that was just incredible work that they did. Okay, now Camila is being modest because she is an expert <laughs> on this subject and um, has done a huge amount of work and advocacy and organized the Chilean Pavilion at the Venice Biennale, which um, Turbatol, which dealt with um, this incredible sacred material and um, gave us like all the direction, like kept pointing us like, you're off course, This <laughs> get back on course. N nobody follows my directions. <laughs> no, we did. <laughs> <laughs> we did. <laughs> they, they follow through, yeah. that's where it's at. <laughs> Howdy. Uh, th thank you so much. I'd love to echo all the, the love for the grandeur and, and, and scale of, of the piece. Uh, I was wondering if you wouldn't mind talking about um, some of your artistic inspirations, especially relative to the scope and, and size of, of both pieces. Como dijo un amigo, ¿tú le preguntarías a una montaña por qué es grande? As a friend of mine said, would you ask a mountain why it is so big? ¿Le harías esa pregunta a Richard Serra? <laughs> would you ask Richard Serra that? <laughs> ¿O será porque soy mujer y suramericana? Or is it because I am a woman and South American? <laughs> eh, para mí... Hacer cosas grandes es algo que necesito para crear esa experiencia de la que se estaba hablando. Para que tú, por un momento, dejes de ver el TikTok y el Instagram. ¿Sí? Porque hay una fuerza de gravedad en los objetos que te atrapa y que entras en su gravitación. Like I said earlier, I had to work at this scale so that I could grab your attention and that you would be in awe of the, the size of the earth and its power so that you would be pulled away from Instagram and TikTok for a moment and be put into the orbit, the gravitational orbit of the earth. La Tierra es algo que estamos viendo todo el tiempo, pero no la estamos escuchando. Y realmente no la vemos. So the earth is something that we are, walk on and that we see often, but we don't really listen to it, her. Por eso te la presento grande, para que no puedas mirar hacia otro lado. This is why I present it to you in a really big form, so you cannot look the other way. Um, I have a question for, for those about the work. Uh, I have a lot of my own thoughts, but I'm kind of like too shy to say them right now, and I'm I'm halfway like still developing them. Um, so I'll just ask a question uh, tonight when everybody is gone. Um, I'm really curious to hear what you think. Like these two pieces are whispering to each other through the walls. Que cuando la escuche me cuente. <laughs> Que yo también quiero escuchar. <laughs> Whoever hears it, uh, please let me know what they're saying to each other. She too wants to know what they whisper. Son distintos lenguajes la tierra en dos formas de manifestarse. It's two different languages, two ways in which the earth manifests. Soil manifests, earth soil. These words are a little bit interchangeable and in Spanish, Tierra is both. I, I, I'm going to jump and share a thought related to that that I had last night. Um, so the, the mountain, Delcy has occasionally referred to the mountain as an offering to us. Um, and El Cielo Telenal deals with the idea of life cycles. The materials are 
um, in the sort of back of the room are all recycled from Dia Beacon um, from past exhibitions that, that were slated for the dumpster. So she's given these materials, she's coated them with soil like a, like a salve and given them new life. Um, and in a way, and laid them out like you, along with the ceramics, um, like you would vegetation in an agricultural setting. Um, and I started to think about it last night in a way, Sierra Terrenal is like an offering to El Abrazo. And I think that's what they might be saying to each other. Podría <laughs> ser. Could be. <laughs> eh, yo quisiera que Alexis nos hablara de dónde salieron los objetos del cielo terrenal. Would you tell us, Alexis, where the objects came from? <laughs> um, okay, so the material, as I said, all came from Dia Beacon, all from past exhibitions. And it's things like, um, you know, beading for creating walls and, and some studs. Um, and then flooring from a Dorothea Rockburn installation, some salvaged wood from the Dan Graham from across the street, um, a little bit of felt from, discarded felt from a Bob Morris installation. So in a way, the ghosts of Dia past live in the presence of that room. But, um, Delcy, I, I know that the ceramics that you made for Silo Terrenal were a transformative experience for you. And I wonder if you could talk to us about it a little bit. Sí, eh, esta exposición en Día Chelsea para mí ha sido una aventura de muchos años que empezamos a trabajar. This exhibition here at Día has been an adventure, um, a multi-year adventure. It's been uh, a couple of years now that we've been working on it. Pero la aventura que fue hacer esas cerámicas en la selva amazónica es una película. <laughs> But the adventure of making those ceramics in the Amazonian um, forests is a movie. Sí, eh, con eh, inundaciones del río, con eh, boas eh, a punto de devorarte, con tener que caminar, nadar, eh, tomar una motocicleta y un carro para poder llegar a la ciudad y tener las reuniones con el equipo de día. So the movie goes a little like this. There were floods, there were boa constrictors that were looking to um, um, have you, <laughs> having to get on different modes of transport, motorbikes, through Uh, this l muddy landscape to arrive anywhere near civilization so that she could access internet to be able to have meetings with Alexis and Luna. I'm going to inflect on that. At one point, she was quite late for a meeting, like, you know, almost an hour late, and our schedules are really packed, and so we had no idea what she was going through. <laughs> so we moved on with our day and figured out, oh, something must have happened or she forgot. She called my cell phone and she was like, I have walked four hours. <laughs> Get on the meeting. <laughs> and I was like, she's right. <laughs> sí. Para que ustedes tengan esas cerámicas en Día Chelsea, tuve que correr muchos peligros. To make the ceramic works that are exhibited next door, I had to take many, many risks. I was in danger. Sí. Eh, había serpientes, decían que había jaguares, que había espíritus malignos, y yo tuve mucho miedo. Vipers, jaguars, evil spirits. I was afraid. Pero sobreviví. But I am alive. Um, eh, la, la cerámica eh, de la Amazonía me interesaba mucho porque era una cerámica que guarda un conocimiento perdido de, de hace cien, desde hace mucho tiempo no se hace este tipo de cerámica en el norte del mundo. The ceramics from the Amazon was something that I was interested in because it's um, been a long, long time since it has been practiced in this part of the world. 
es una cerámica que se hace eh, usando eh, productos vegetales. Se machaca mucho las hojas para dar el color negro a la cerámica con la savia de las plantas. So it's a type, it's a process that requires that you um, crush leaves to make a, um, the sap that comes from the leaves is then coating the ceramics and that's what gives it its particularly dark black color. Y eh, eh, las mujeres que son las encargadas de hacer cerámica es un trabajo para mí muy difícil y un poco peligroso porque ellas mueven la cerámica eh, metiendo las manos al fuego. And the women who work this technique um, put their hands in the fire to pull out the ceramics. Las mujeres son las las mujeres indígenas de la Amazonía son las encargadas de hacer la cerámica para cocinar, para comer. Es una labor muy importante y un chamán me dijo que allí estaba el poder femenino de la mujer de su etnia. The women, the indigenous women of the Amazon who work this technique and make the ceramics um, do so to create all of the wares that they use in their community to feed themselves. And a medicine man, visionary chaman, once uh, told Delcy that that is where the power, the feminine power lives. It resides in the ceramics. Mm. La cerámica es un elemento muy importante desde hace miles de años, pero para mí es muy importante como tratar de entender cómo el hombre pudo descubrir transformar la tierra en cerámica. So ceramics is a craft, a tradition, a practice that has thousands of years, but for Delcy the question was what was that moment in which clay was molded and we, we understood that it could become these vessels. Porque yo soy artista y estoy transformando y poniendo la tierra en el espacio expositivo. Because I'm an artist who is taking earth and transforming it and putting it in exhibition spaces. Eh, puedo transmitirles mensajes usando el mismo elemento de diferentes maneras y cada vez el mensaje Va a ser distinto. I can use these materials differently every time, transforming through processes this one material, and every time the message is slightly different, the shape is different. Eh, bueno, muchas gracias. Uh, I'll talk in Spanish. I think it's appropriate. Eh, Delcy, muchísimas gracias por estar acá. Es muy importante para mí. Eh, colombiana y artista, eh, o lo que digo, <ríe> eh, que estés acá. Eh, siento que es una forma muy increíble de volver a hablar del material, ¿cierto? Estamos hablando de que el mundo está muy sobre materiality, but not sobre, en sí sobre el material. Para mí eso significa mucho y es muy importante pensar que está en un pristine space, pero de por sí ya el material es pristine. Entonces creo que es algo muy bello. Muchas gracias por eso. Y me gustaría mucho saber qué piensas tú, cómo cambiaría esta pieza en otros espacios eh, o si pues, está diseñada solo para día. Eh, y pues feliz de compartir tierra. Creo que la tierra en sí tiene muchos significados para muchas personas y siendo una colombiana latina poniendo tierra en este espacio es algo muy importante y muy disruptivo. Entonces, gracias. ¿Te traduzco o quieres traducirte a ti misma? Um, Te traduzco. Well, basically what I was trying to say was that I was very happy. I wanted to express myself in Spanish because I think it's appropriate. And that I was very glad to, uh, first of all, be Colombian and pursue um, my career as an artist, or that's what I say. 
and uh, that it's very important how it's um, met, like we're talking about this like material, um, how the world it's become very at, about materiality, but not about like the material. And that I find it very interesting how there's like this material put in a space that it's pristine, but also the material it's already pristine and like pure and like so magical. And that also coming from an like Latin American artist, Colombian, that I share the actual soil, which is what means tierra, como la misma tierra que compartimos. Um, for me, it's very significant and it's very disruptive and it's emotional <laughs> too. Thank you. And more in like this place and like what it would happen if um, it was showcased in other spaces, right? Because we're talking about Dia, we're talking about like the history of Dia, and I mean, a woman Latin American here, it's very important. Thank you. Eh, la, cuando yo creo una obra, eh, siempre hay un diálogo con el espacio y es parte de un elemento fundamental del que emerge la obra. Siempre estoy dialogando y las obras cambian, depende del espacio donde esté haciéndola. Yo Es, estuve visitando Día Chelsea en varias ocasiones, eh, pasando tiempo ahí, esperando que el espacio me hablara, que la luz me hablara, que el aire me hablara. Y desde ese diálogo surgió las piezas que estás viendo. When I create work, I'm always in dialogue with the space, the uniqueness of that space. For these pieces, I came over an, an a number of years and spent time in the space and waited, waited for the space to speak to me. And the work emerges out of that dialogue. Good evening. Uh, my name is Constantin. I have a question to Delcy. I would like to follow up on the thought about the mountain and nature in general. Um, the mountain that does not impose itself on us and how nature gives us all these feelings that we cannot describe. So my question to Delcy is, how do you deal with language? Language is very abstract. It's something we humans have created. It separates us from the world. And you call it Instagram or TikTok, but I think it can also be um, made even more, how do you say, um, like the, the, common, the common ground is language. And I wonder how you work with language, um, whether you have notes, whether you use language, whether you just go by feelings, and whether you actually have to title your work uh, to say something that we can all feel and um, have questions about, which we all agree we love and like and, and so on. Thank you. Como acabo de decir, eh, hablo con el espacio. El espacio me habla, yo lo escucho y trato de entender qué es lo que, que podría funcionar en un espacio. No te puedo explicar en qué lengua hablamos, uh -huh. solo que es dejarse sentir. Los sentimientos hablan un idioma universal. Si tú estás sintiendo esa pieza, estás eh, escuchando y hablando del idioma de los sentimientos. ¿sí? Es lo que yo y la tierra quisieron hacerte sentir. Esa es la lengua. As I just mentioned, I had a dialogue with the space. So I entered the space and through feeling, I begin a conversation with a space. Um, it is a language of listening, of sensing, and the emotions that arise from being in that open-ended conversation are the ones that lead me to create the work. 
in relation to all of these other materials. I put them there in space and then you enter and begin to have your experience and your emotions and are provoked by this um, union of different types of conversations that are going on. That is the language. Delcy, thank you so much for giving us this, for giving us so much of us in particular, so much of your time and yourself over the last almost five years. Um, and thank you all for coming and speaking with us tonight.